Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture, we will talk about the break and continue keywords in Java. Here's our outline. We will talk about the break keyword and the continue keyword and we will see some examples. So let's get started. Break and continue are special keywords that can be used within loops, all right? So whenever we use the break keyword inside a loop, this means that we want to exit the loop regardless of the condition. Even if this loop is an infinite loop, when we use the break keyword, we will exit the loop and we will stop executing its body, all right? Now what about the continue keyword? When we use the continue keyword, we will skip the rest of the loop's body. In other words, we will continue executing the loop as if we finished executing the body. So suppose that we use continue inside a for loop. So when the continue statement is executed, then we will go and execute the change part of the for loop. And after that, we will check the condition. If the condition is true, we will re-execute the body. And if it is false, we will exit the loop. And if we use the continue keyword inside a while loop or a do while loop, then we will check the condition. So if the condition is true, we will re-execute the body of the loop. If the condition is false, we will exit the loop, all right? Now let's see some examples. Over here, I'm using a for loop. So I'm saying for int i equal one, as long as i is less than or equal to 10 and i plus plus, all right? So this loop runs 10 times. And inside the loop, I'm testing if i is an even number. So if i is an even number, as you can see over here, I'm executing continue. So in other words, if i is an even number, I will stop executing the body of the loop and I will go and execute the change. And after that, we will continue executing the for loop normally, all right? Now, what if i is an odd number? So this condition over here will be false, right? So this continue statement will not be executed. So we are going to continue executing this code over here. So this print statement will be executed. So we are going to print i plus space, right? So this code over here prints the odd numbers. Let's go over this code in details. i starts at 1. 1 is less than or equal to 10. This is true. So now we will execute the body. Is 1 an even number? No, this is false. 1 is an odd number. So the continue will not be executed and you are going to print one with a space. Now, as you can see, the body of the for loop is finished. So we're going to execute the change over here. We are going to increment i. So now i is equal to two. Is two less than or equal to 10? Yes, this is true. So now we're going to execute this if statement. Is two an even number? Yes, it is. So we're going to execute continue. So we will skip the rest of the body and we will go and execute the change. So two will not be printed. So now we want to increment i. So i is now equal to 3. Is 3 less than or equal to 10? Yes, it is. So this condition over here is false. And after that, we will print 3 with a space and then increment i. Now i is equal to 4. This condition is true. And also, 4 is an even number. So we'll execute continue. So we'll go to the change and continue executing the loop. So the continue keyword inside the for loop skips the rest of the body and takes me to the change. All right. Now let's see another example. Over here, I declared a variable n outside the while loop. And as you can see, I'm saying while true. So this is an infinite loop. So even if this is an infinite loop, right now, there is a way in order to exit this loop. And it is by using the break keyword, right? So have a look over here. I'm printing enter a number between 1 and 10. And after that, I'm reading the input from the user and storing it inside n, all right? Now suppose that I want to keep reading an input from the user as long as the number n is not between 1 and 10. So look what I'm going to do. I will say if n is less than 1 or if n is greater than 10. So if n is not between 1 and 10, I want to continue. So what's going to happen? When this continue is executed, we will go and check the condition. In this case, the condition is always true. So we are going to re-execute this statement. So we'll ask the user to enter another number. And then we will read the number from the user and store it inside n. And as long as n is not between 1 and 10, we will keep executing continue and re-asking the user to enter another input, all right? Now suppose that n is between 1 and 10. So this means that this condition is false, so the continue will not be executed. So we will continue executing the code that is over here. So we can print, for example, n is between 1 and 10. So now what's going to happen? As you can see, the while loop ends over here. So we are going to recheck the condition. In this case, it is true. And then we are going to ask the user to enter another number. But obviously, we don't want to do this because the user entered the number between 1 and 10. So over here, we can use the break keyword to exit the loop. So as long as the user doesn't enter a number between 1 and 10, we will keep executing continue. 
and when the user enters a number between 1 and 10 we will break out from the loop now you might be asking why did I print this over here why didn't I print it outside the loop so I did this because I know that this statement will be executed only once because I know that I'm going to break outside the loop and also I did this because I know whenever we reach this point over here n is a number between 1 and 10 all right and of course you can write the code like this when the user enters a number between 1 and 10 this break will be executed so we will exit the loop and after that we are going to print n is between 1 and 10 but what's important over here is that the variable n is declared outside the loop so because it is declared outside the loop we can access it over here all right but if n is declared inside the loop for example like this this statement will give us an error so as you can see over here we are declaring the variable and and initializing it to be equal to as dot next int so the variable n is only available inside the loop we cannot use it outside the loop just like when we declare a variable i inside the for loop all right so in order to be able to access an outside the loop we have to declare it outside the loop like this so this is it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video